Hello and welcome back to CQ, the AWS Certification Quiz Show, episode three. So today, once again, we will be having a look at the Solutions Architect um, study guide from Wiley.com, also available at Amazon.com. So a few more answers coming your way, helping you prep for your next architect exam. So today I have with me Karthik. Uh, Karthik uh, is actually one of our most tenured trainers globally. Uh, so a lot of experience bringing our way, but Karthik, You've recently actually moved into a new role. Do you want to tell us a bit about it? Hi, thank you for inviting me, MJ. Uh, I've been working as a technical trainer for a few years now. And Just a few? Yes, <laughs> a few years. Uh, and I've recently moved into a new role. I've, uh, uh, I'm now a uh, technical curriculum architect, so I help. Oh. Yeah. Sounds complicated. Not very complicated. <laughs> uh, it's a fancy title. I help build new content labs. Uh, and I'm using some of the knowledge I gained over these years as a trainer uh, to see what students want in the classroom environment and then use some of that uh, feedback to build and improve some of our content and continue learning through the process. Yes. So moved from upfront center stage to behind the scenes content wise. Yes. Bit of a change. Good for now and I'm, I'm enjoying. So Karthik, have you seen the show? Do you know what to expect today? I have. I have seen the show. I've, uh, I was, in fact, uh, looking at some of the content from Sydney Summit last week. That was really nice. Oh, it was uh, a big week, I think. A big week. It was nice to see uh, a lot of you. And then I've seen uh, another session with Sander. Uh, that was really nice. I got to Ex see... Ex-teammate of yours, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Now it's your new role. Good, good friend and uh, big shoes to fill in, I guess, <laughs> today. Indeed. So if, if any of you watching along online do want to check out those Sydney Summit sessions we did, they're a bit shorter, 15-minute uh, snippets of the show. Uh, we looked at architecting exam, we looked at machine learning, speciality yep. exam. That just blew my mind, Karthik. It was very intense. We looked at our security exam, and we did a bit of a special hardcore uh, viewing with Glenn Gore. So it's yep. pretty exciting. So log on to the AWS channel on twitch.tv forward slash AWS and check them out if you would like. Excellent. Okay, so we do have John with us here, who was with you front of screen at Sydney Summit last week. How he is watching the chat in the background, so please feel free to send through any questions for Karthik if you have them, and vote along with us as we go. Karthik, are you ready? Excited. Excited? Yes. Awesome. Okay, first question of the day. Bit of high availability. Ready? Right. Your corporate data center was recently flooded, which caused significant outages. Your CIO mandated to move to the cloud, but they are still concerned about catastrophic failures in the data center. What can you do to elevate, elevate <laughs> their concerns, Karthik? Sure. This is an awesome question. Like To me, this is a very typical exam question, and I love how real life it is. So we're looking for a bit of redundancy. Right. Now, this being the first question, what I'd like to do is take a little more time uh, to first of all follow a few uh, best practices while handling these questions. Awesome. We'll go to the technical aspect um, after that. Fantastic. Now, maybe this is a tip for the day, but... Um, th the tip for the day comes at the end, Karthi. You said you'd seen the show. I start with the best. <laughs> We're going to start with the exam tip of the week. I love it. Breaking the rules already. <laughs> and keep getting better each day. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. Exam tip of the week. Okay. Now, ob observe how this question um, is designed. You start with a scenario 
yeah. and then it comes up uh, you, you have a question that follows the scenario and finally you've got to pick a few answers quite often while working with colleagues and customers you notice they like to talk about long stories yes <laughs> this happened and that happened and and whatnot and then they finally tell you and this is the problem I'm trying to solve okay so you know quite often uh, not everything they said in the scenario was relevant to the actual question so the way I like to approach Absolutely. questions is to start by first reading the question so let's do this slow what can you do to elevate their concerns now unfortunately there's not much I can get but what I do understand is I want to improve that situation next read the scenario yep your corporate data center was recently flooded which caused significant outages so it is a data center yeah yeah the CIO mandated a move to the cloud but they are still concerned about catastrophic failures in a data center so, so mm -hmm. and correct me if I'm wrong going off your tip here all we really need to know is how to survive the failure of something exactly from this scenario exactly so um, the, uh, the, that the, the first tip is start with a question then read the scenario okay my second tip is you've got to formulate uh, keywords in your mind as you read through the scenario and the question so keywords for me here would be uh, corporate data center yeah singular which means it's a data center uh, outage is another keyword failure is another Failures, keyword yeah. that's my and one finally elevate uh, their concerns so you know what it is now this is especially helpful uh, because in some of our uh, exams the, the most challenging part is uh, making sure you have sufficient time okay so if you can think of mechanisms like this read the question get your keywords right and then finally all you've got to do is um, divide and conquer get yep. rid of all the wrong answers you know that that will really help um, so Fantastic. what are your options here let's look at them and they're looking for one answer only in this one Karthik okay uh, let me uh, pause there for a minute that's another important tip sometimes you're expected to choose multiple answers yeah uh, and not just a single one so make sure you look at the question carefully at the end of the question it's generally um, you know um, uh, I guess let me rephrase that you it generally ends with um, a bracket which states single choice multiple choice yes things okay. like that yeah so look out for this now because there's nothing here it's understood it's a single choice option. perfect so option one is distribute the architecture across multiple availability zones sounds good I, I mean it sounds good straight away it right? does yeah um, can you talk us through availability zones for our viewers online Karthik? I will so um, while we talk about this if uh, MJ or John one of you can post the link for the global infrastructure in the chat yes. window that good help. point thanks Karthi so um, the AWS global infrastructure is made up of regions, availability zones, data centers, and edge locations. So a few different keywords, keywords. straight away. Yeah. Keywords. Okay. And it's important to note that the way we do things at AWS may be slightly different um, if, yep. if you look at other options. Okay. Uh, now, in AWS, an availability zone is a cluster of multiple data centers. It's n although we tend to refer to it as a data center, but it's actually a collection a of many data centers. Perfect. And every region will contain at least two or more availability zones. Here in Sydney, we have three availability zones uh, which make up a region. So think about that again. Perfect. A region is a logical collection of two or more availability zones, and each availability zone contains uh, two, two or, or more, more data centers got it um, so that sounds like a very good answer highly to the question yeah redundant perfect yeah, yeah. I'm reminded okay. of this old uh, saying you know don't put all your eggs in the same basket you want to distribute <laughs> your instances your your servers in this context across availability zones and that way you're providing your application with a uh, highly available backbone infrastructure and yep. that would be the right way to go so let's not put all of our eggs in basket one and look at the rest of the answers. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a good thing to do. Uh, my tip three here is don't be overconfident and stop reading any further. Three tips already? Yeah. You get one per episode, Karthik. 
<laughs> I told you it's going to get better. Okay. Right? So you don't want uh, to be overconfident. The rule for the certification is you pick the best answer. Okay. So sometimes you might see there are multiple answers that could that be correct. correct. But you've got to pick the best answer that's available. Perfect. Or sometimes none of them are fully um, going to solve the problem. But what's the best possible option then with what you have? Perfect. Now? So keeping that in mind, let's look at two. Yep. Use an Amazon VPC with subnets. Um, so that's not a correct answer. The reason be is because uh, although you might use multiple subnets, all those subnets may be a part of the same availability zone. Perfect. So your eggs are in one basket. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. <laughs> three, launch the compute in a placement group. Yep. Um, for our viewers, a placement group is a collection of EC2 instances that work uh, very closely with each other. They have very low network latency. Yep. And uh, therefore, uh, they offer good performance. And this is good for uh, workloads like high performance computing and big data applications and so on. It doesn't really solve the problem uh, we, we're trying to address here. Perfect. And uh, four, reserved, purchased reserved instances. Uh, reserved instances will help if you're looking at long-term savings. Sure. Right, and that's, that's the big benefit uh, you want to look at. So we do have a question coming through, mm -hmm. Karthik, if you don't mind. Um, and this is from Blue Skyfish 14 why is it not two? I don't get different AZ per subnet. Can you it, give a bit of a... I think uh, Blue Sky... Got it? Yeah, <laughs> great. Perfect. Sure. All right, good. so we're locking in number one? Yeah, good. Perfect. There you go. One it is. Oh, and I'm so sorry, guys, online. I totally forgot to check the poll, but luckily you all went for number one. So fantastic. Let's move on. Question two. All right, security question, Karthi. Which feature of AWS is designed to permit calls to the platform from an Amazon EC2 instance without needing access keys placed on the instance? And again, one answer only, please, Karthik. Very good. Um, this is a good question. I like this question. Oh. Uh, for a few reasons. The scenario isn't too big. <laughs> yeah, it's, per it's actually Quick, a very short question Very for us. direct. Yeah. I like it. Uh, so you asked me a question and I we can talk about it. Now, let's... Uh, slightly reverse the order in which we we'll talk about uh, the options. And just so you know, people jumped in straight away. We're getting a bit of a favor for roles. So just to give you a heads up there as you're talking through your answers. Excellent. Kind of. Okay, good. So um, I'm going to slightly uh, change the order okay. while we discuss. Sure. Let's start with option four, Amazon EC2 Keeper. No one's selected that, but uh, you know that's the option you use to log into an instance. Sure. Um, so if you understand SSH access, that's what it means, and therefore it doesn't really align with the question here. That's perfect. Ruled out. Cross that one off. Option two: I am groups. A group is a collection of users. Yep. Um, and here we are not talking about a user; we are talking about an application running on EC2, and therefore two is ruled out as well. Nice and easy. Okay, so we're looking at one and three, and that is the split on the poll as well, Karthik. Correct. Now remember in the earlier question I said sometimes you have multiple answers that could be right, but yeah. you've got to pick the best answer. Now, three it, it refers to an IAM role. What is it? An IAM role is a container which yep. provides temporary credentials. In other words, it gives you uh, an access key, a secret access key, a token, and a time to live which refers to uh, the validity of that credential, which is good and you really okay. need it. However, the problem here, if you read the question again, okay. you are trying to attach this role to an EC2 instance. Yeah. And you can't do that. You cannot attach an IAM role to an EC2 instance uh, because it's not su simply supported. That is where an instance profile comes into the picture. An instance profile is a, is a container which links to an IAM role and then you can attach an instance profile to an EC2 instance. So it's your connector. It's your connector yeah. to to uh, a, to a role, uh, and that's how it, it works. And therefore, the correct answer is one IAM instance profile. Let's check if it is the right answer, Karthi. You seem very confident with this. Yeah. Quick check on the poll. They're still favoring number three. Poll is closed. Excellent. One it was. Excellent. There you go. Uh, I, I also want to add something. Yeah. 
Uh, this is something unique to the Amazon EC2 service. For okay. pretty much every other service, such as um, Lambda or yeah. um, trying to think of CloudFront and so on, you can directly attach an IAM role to this service. But it's for Amazon EC2 where you'll Which need an instance profile. Going off what you said before, Clue was in the question all Clue. along. Yes. Perfect. All right, let's jump to question three. Decoupling. Ready? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Your company has 50,000 weather stations that send updates every two seconds. Yeah. What service will, will enable you to ingest this stream of data and store it to Amazon S3 for future processing? Excellent. So um, again, I like going by my tip, you start with the question, which service will help you ingest data and send it off to S3? And then you read the scenario, 50,000 weather stations every two seconds. So we're looking for speed as well here. Yeah. Correct, yeah. correct. Uh, now, um, pretty much everybody who voted has uh, picked the right answer, I see. Straight uh, away. Straight well, away. The, well, like you said, right, Firehose, it sounds quick. It's everything is there, kind it of is. pulling from the question. It is. It's, it's, a, it's, it, it's, it's, it's good, but I also want to rule out and uh, talk about another aspect where I said okay, let's sometimes do that you might have more than one answer that could be correct. Yep. Uh, and you've got to pick the right option. Now, option three and four are, are ruled out. They don't really make sense. Data pipeline is more like an ETL engine to help move and transform your data. You want to perform some kind of uh, cron activity and so on, you could do that. So it works on files as opposed to strings. Correct. So yep. imagine you want to, you have a database, you want to create a backup uh, yeah. regularly and then process that information. Uh, you could think of data pipeline and so on. Perfect. Uh, EC2, you know, is, is is a virtual machine. Yeah. So that doesn't work. But so we're looking at one and two. One and two. Okay. Now, I, I understand all of you who have answered have picked the right answer, but one could have also been an option. Okay. Uh, the, the way this would work is uh, you put all the um, what information updates into a queue, SQSQ, and then that could trigger a Lambda function, would, which could then oh, take it and yeah. put it off to S3 and so yeah, on. Perfect. So that could work. It's technically doable. But it's not the fastest solution. It's correct? not the fastest solution, and there's a better way of doing this, and that is Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose, because it's, it's specifically designed to address this issue here. Perfect. And why would you want to build a Lambda function and write extra code and all of that when Data Firehose can do this out of the box for you? So someone on the chat, Karthik, mm -hmm. has uh, a Russian bot said, I would do Lambda with concurrency. You could. Like I said, yeah. two could, uh, I mean, uh, SQS could also work. Yeah. But two is a better option. Mm, and therefore, two is uh, the option. We're if, going with number two? Yeah, if, if this question said pick two answers, I would pick one and two. Ah, there we go. Okay, got and you. Therefore, Paul is closed and two is correct. You'll be happy to hear. Yeah. Our expert is indeed <laughs> All of them got it, it right. today. Yeah, All everyone online got, right. got that one right as well. Okay, fantastic. Let's move to question four. Smashing through these today, Karthi. Mm -hmm. All right, you have an application that for legal reasons must be hosted in the United States when US citizens access it. The application must be in the European Union when citizens of the EU access it. For all other citizens of the world, the application must be hosted in Sydney. Mm -hmm. Long one. Following, <laughs> which routing policy should you choose in order to achieve this? One answer only. There you go. You see, uh, this is another good example yeah. where the question. <laughs> I knew you were going to say this. <laughs> what is the routing policy? Oh, so you're not worried about compliance and. Uh, all of that uh, in terms of security, yep. you're more interested in routing policy, Perfect. isn't it? Yep. So you've got to pick the right answer. Um, so let's look at the choices here. Um, you've got a few split answers, so uh, good yeah, for discussion. Yeah, one and three at the minute. So let's look at number one, latency. I apologize, the answers are on the poll and none of the questions. Oh, the answers are wrong apparently on the poll. Sorry about that, but the polling is yeah, it's, 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 it's okay. Numbers are correct as per the question, just incorrect answers written there. <laughs> got it. Sorry All right, so let's look at the question. Number one, latency-based. And a few people have chosen this, Karthi. Okay. Now, let me uh, change the way I look at this for a minute. Let's, let's get rid of the bad ones first. Yes. Okay, let's start okay. with four, IP lookup routing. Now, this is a good way of 
you know, getting rid of incorrect answers. There is no routing policy called IP lookup routing. Oh, cool. So just so cross it get out. Rid of, get rid of it if you're not very sure of this. Data governance routing is, again, something made up. There is no policy, uh, Route 53 policy like that. So that goes off. And if our viewers had sat in one of your classes, they would know that, right? <laughs> I, I hope so. Architecting uh, on AWS will post the link to the classes for you, everyone. Yes, but for this course, systems operations on AWS would be a better course. Oh, I love it. Yeah. yeah. OK. Yes. Um, then we are left with options one and three. Which is where the polls are going. So talk us through it. Very good. So latency-based routing and geolocation routing. Now, how do these uh, systems work? Let's, let's look at an example. Imagine you work for a corporate, a very large corporate organization. You have your uh, operations in different parts of the world. Sure. Uh, let's say something's hosted here in Sydney, Australia. There's yep. something in America and something in Singapore, etc. cetera. Um, now, there could be two situations. In the first situation, you want to see where does the request originate. Yep. And depending on where it comes from, you want to send them to exactly uh, one country because of legal reasons, just aligning with this question Perfect. right here. Or you might have a second scenario where it's not about compliance, but it's more about uh, performance, if you will, you know, yeah, uh, latency and those kind of things you're looking at. So when I'm in America, I want to be directed to an endpoint that is in America or closer to America. Uh, versus Australia and and so on. Okay. Um, now, if that is your case, you're not worried about governance so much. You're more concerned about latency. Yeah. And for those kind of workloads, option one would be a better choice, latency-based routing. So what it does, AWS uh, is constantly monitoring the global network, uh, and they provide you this routing option, whereby they will determine from your network not physical location, okay. your network, because you may be on a VPN connection that's closer to the sure. endpoint. So it's going to look at your network latency to the endpoint and then direct you to um, that endpoint, you know, yeah. that endpoint, assuming you have multiple endpoints here. Okay. But, but for us here, the question is not about latency, it's about geolocation. So imagine, uh, I know I'm making up an odd example here, but let's say you have websites uh, in Japanese and in Italian and English and so on. Yeah. And when a user from Japan goes to your site, you want to direct them to a Japanese site. Okay. To further complicate my question, yeah. let's <laughs> say the, the Japanese site is not actually hosted in Japan, it's hosted in some other part of the world. Yeah. So the latency may not be good, but you will still be directed to the yeah. website in Japanese, which is hosted wherever, because you determine that if a request originates here, it has to be directed to so-and-so endpoint. Perfect. And that is what the question wants us to do. And therefore, geolocation routing would be a better choice, option three. So locking in number three, geolocation. Again, I really like what you said at the beginning of it. It's actually really obvious and quite a logical answer yeah. with the scenario you're given. Every point of that scenario, it gives you a location. Exactly. Yep. So it there's a question. Uh, uh, so actually, our producer already asked, oh, answered it for you, Carl, excellent. because you were on a roll with your explanation. So thank you, Crazy Maniac. Hopefully, uh, our producer gave you that answer. Let's move on to question five. Yes, please. All right. SQS. How can you grant a different AWS account permission to send messages to your Amazon SQS queue? Very good. This is uh, a good question again. Mm. Um, now, if you broadly look at IAM policies, uh, there are, uh, or, or rather, let me rephrase what I said. If you want to grant access to a service, you can broadly do this in two ways, um, or should I say three ways now. You have <laughs> IAM, <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. which is one way of doing it, yeah. AWS IAM, Identity Absolutely. and Access Management. Yep. It's a service which uh, is used to define permissions for many services, including SQS. You could certainly use that. You have service control policies where it falls under AWS organizations. Uh, so imagine you have multiple AWS accounts, you could use that option. Okay. And then there, there's a third option called resource-based policies. Okay. So uh, what is a resource-based policy? What's an IAM policy? And uh, finally, SCP policy. 
SCP, I've already mentioned, is a policy where you have multiple AWS accounts. There's an organization. So that's ruled out. Let's look at the answers here. And oh. the poll, Karthik, just a quick check in. They're toying between two and four online. Two and four. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, good. So um, nobody, oh, there's three now. Some of them picked three, two. So let's let's look at it then. First option is have your accounts application use your accounts credential to access SQS. Views online have said no. No, not that's not a good that, option yeah. because it's not secure. Good. Two, create an IAM user for the other account and add an IAM policy that grants access to the queue. Okay. Now, a few important points here. First of all, with IAM, you define permissions for resources or users in the same account. Yeah. So imagine you had account one, I had account two. And if I want to define something for users and services in my, my account, I could do that with IAM. Okay. Or I could create a role and say, you account two, user so MJ, can assume my role and do something. Yep. But Makes there's sense. no talk about roles anyway. No, here. there's not at all. And therefore, option two, which says create an IAM user for the other account and add an IAM policy that grants access to the queue is incorrect. Because you could only do it in the same account, you can't do it across a Across, account, got it. Unless it's a role. Uh, four is so wrong. So you're getting rid of number two, which is current favorite. Yes. With the viewers. Okay, yes. let's look at number three. Sorry, Karthik. Uh, I'll come back to three in a second. Okay. Four says use Amazon VPC peering. Uh, between the two accounts. VPC peering is setting up your network to do something, uh, but SQS A doesn't use VPC. Okay. And B, the question is more to do with permission, and VPC peering is, is, is not going to be the right answer. Therefore, yep. option Simple four enough. is ruled out. So three is probably the right, but let's look at it. Three states create an Amazon SQS policy that grants the other account access. Now remember what we said, there's a third way of doing things. It's called a resource-based policy. A resource-based policy is a policy that's specific to the resource, here Amazon SQS in question, yep. where you can define a policy. And the big advantage of a resource-based policy is you can define permission for users and services not only in the same account, but to somebody else from another account. Okay. And that okay. is what they want us to do. And that is why option three is a better choice if you look up the chat window, there's the link for a resource-based policy and you'll, you'll be able to read more and find out the difference. Perfect, happy with your number three? Yep. Yeah. Three it is, awesome. All right, let's move on to question six. Amazon DynamoDB, oh, awesome. Okay. You are building a photo management application that maintains metadata on millions of images in an Amazon DynamoDB table. When a photo is retrieved, you want to display the metadata text next to the image. Mm -hmm. Which Amazon DynamoDB operation will you use to retrieve the metadata attributes from the table? Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is a simple question. Um, they're talking about DynamoDB, and they're talking about pictures. Yeah. One I mean, I've never heard of a couple of these yeah. straight away. So I would automatically You're right. knock out a couple. <laughs> You're right, exactly, get rid of a few. Yeah. Uh, now, one of the things I want to call out here is you generally don't store images on, 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 on a database. So, you, you know, the image is probably on S3 and um, the information about the image yeah. is on DynamoDB. Okay. And if you're familiar with the concept of a primary key, uh, in DynamoDB we, we, we refer to them as partition keys and sort keys. Uh, so the information about the image, the you know, is going to be your partition key. Yep. And one of the keywords yep. in the scenario is uh, where is that? It says next to the image, next. which means they're referring to other attributes uh, besides the primary key. Yeah. So how would you do that if you know which key you're interested in? Getting the attributes would be easy. Okay. Now, option three and four, there is no option like that. Search operation, find operation uh, doesn't exist. Yeah, so I've it's ruled out. We're left with options one a query and two. Or a scan. Yeah. Options. What's the main difference? A scan is used to search the entire Why? table, yep. uh, especially when you don't have some uh, attribute which is indexed, like a primary key. Perfect. Uh, and that's when you would use. But here in this question, you have the required information which is indexed, Already. and therefore query would be a better option, I feel. 
Oh, nice, Looks simple. Like Nailed that, I feel. Uh, on the poll, yep, everyone is agreeing with number one. Okay. Excellent. One it is. Excellent. Good. Kartik, Good thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Maybe I have to get you back, uh, back again. Thank you. Another time. The book. Uh, just to quickly remind you all, the resource we were using for today's questions is the official study guide from Wiley.com, also available at Amazon.com. Please join us next time on another episode of CQ. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.